Hey friends, hope you're doing well. Today I'd like to show you how you can create your own large language model inference endpoint, similar to the one which you're familiar with from OpenAI. But before we do this, let me first ask you, please, if you have not done so far, subscribe to the channel. And if you like the video, please give it a like afterwards. Thank you so much. In this video, I'd like to introduce LLM Studio to you. This is a neat little tool I came across a few days ago and it allows us to run any kind of open source model locally on our device without doing any programming or also set up an inference server on our local host and then send requests to the server and get the response back. So both of these options are possible and let me show you how it's done. So at first, of course, you need to download it and then you get uh, an interface which looks like that. And if you go to the magnifier here, they can search for any kind of open source model, which probably is published most often on Hugging Face. In this case, I'm using this new model, Cephere, and I just used the bloke version uh, in the 7 billion model. And as you can see here, it's a size of, in this case, around four gigabytes. And I downloaded this uh, quantized 4KS model. You can also try out different models or even choose a complete different LLM, like Mistral, for instance, or Llama 2, and so on. So um, after this, you download it, as I said here, to LLM Studio, and then you can get started. So either you use here uh, the direct chat interface, so you go in here to AI chat, and then in, and see here, I already crossed the question here, and then you get the response. But let me try that again. So for instance, a list three web scraping, that's what my final uh, my prior question was, uh, libraries, libraries in Python, like this, and if I run this, you'll see that here, it just uh, creates beautiful soup, scrappy, selenium, and gives me a few additional information here. So you can see this works exactly um, as I would expect it to work. So it generates text here, and it's actually quite fast, um, given that it is running on CPU, right, and locally, and also it creates a really good response, at least from my point of view, in regards of that. Um, so that's it actually for running these models locally using LLM Studio directly in here with this web interface. Okay, so really easy to set up, nothing really complex here, and uh, just decide which kind of model you want to try, or download several models and try them all, and then just ask a question and uh, check out what kind of response you get. So that is for that. And then next, as I said, I promised to you, there's also an option to create a local inference server. That just means we can set up like uh, OpenAI does with JetGPT, right? They have the model and they have an endpoint and you need, of course, a key from them. Maybe you have to pay if the trial period expired. And uh, then you can use, um, for instance, GPT-4 and other, or GPT-3.5 and other models, right, from them, like Whisper and so on. Now, instead of actually calling the API endpoint from uh, OpenAI and using ChatGPT, we can actually go in here, if you go there, the next thing, and set a local inference server, which is awesome, right? Because here is actually uh, most of the Python code which we need. So we have an endpoint, which is URL, which is hosted here on localhost, 1034, and then chat completions. So if you have used uh, the OpenAI uh, and um, ChatGPT endpoint before with Python, for instance, or any other kind of programming language, you know that it's kind of similar because there's also a chat completion endpoint. And then you specify here the content type, which is application JSON. The only thing which is missing here, which you need to set up, of course, is the authorization. So with ChatGPT, of course, you need to have some kind of token, bearer token, or anything like that. Uh, but here you don't have, have to use this because you run it locally. And then you define here also a few parameters like messages here. Then the role is the user, the content, and then here you specify your content. The only thing you need to be aware of is that there are also three hashes instruction and then again three hashes response. So there's a few additional, well, boilerplate uh, information here, but uh, the introduce yourself, this is actually the message which you define. And then you also define a stop criteria, which is this hash instructions, the temperature, which is normally a value between zero and one, and then the maximum amount of tokens, minus one. It's probably that it generates as much tokens as it wants to generate for the answer. But of course, you could also be a little bit more, uh, let's say, careful here and decide, okay, I just want to have a maximum of uh, 200 or 1,000 tokens, whatever you need. Um, be aware, a token is not exactly one word, but um, I mean, more or less, as a rule of thumb, you can think of it like that. Um, then there is stream, whether you want to have a streaming response or not. By default here, it's false. So that's a Boolean value. But that's basically it. This is what you have to set up 
And then if you do this, you can also start here, define what kind of server port you want. I for now leave the default port and then I define, okay, uh, in this case, I leave the default settings for cross origin and so on. That's not actually required here to change, but you just need to get started with start server. And then this server gets started on local host. You have a few server logs here, which also you can see uh, later on your response, which is generated. But for now, let me go into my Visual Studio here. And there's actually uh, kind of the same code as you've seen before, um, which is actually given by LM Studio. So we have a um, post request here to this endpoint, which you've seen, application JSON, and then the message. And my message here is just explain how Python's VNV module works in five sentences. So let's say actually in three sentences. So we have a little less uh, code here, or a little less response time. And then also the stop criteria, temperature, max tokens, and stream. I use the default settings here. Um, which was given in the in LM Studio here, like these ones in here, these ones. And now actually I can get started and run this. So I can send this actually to the endpoint and I do this and let's just see what kind of response we get. So if I say now Python, then the file, which is localhost llm.py. And then let me just run it, uh, press enter. And then we just wait until this response is generated and then we should actually get a response in here as well. So let's have a look at in here and you can see that there the log is already creating some text here and is writing it and then if this is done because we said stream defaults we should actually also see it here in the terminal and there it is this is the final output here so uh, id and so on this was just because i printed it in between but the final response is uh, given there let me just uh, go up a little bit like that you can see that python's virtual environment vnd module is built in tool that creates and so on and so on so on so on so on and this is then a simple intuitive workflow. Okay, so I mean, I cut it here a little bit, probably can't see everything, but um, hopefully you get the point, really. Like um, you can now have your own endpoint. Uh, you can host this locally, or you have a server maybe somewhere hosted uh, online, and you can actually now use this uh, LM Studio and create your server like that, and have your own endpoint, which you can send data or questions to, and that get responses. And this all is open source. So this is all on your own hardware. There's no ChatGPT, no OpenAI involved. There's nothing to pay, except of course for the compute resources you have. Um, but that's it actually for LM Studio. So I think it's a really great tool because it allows either someone who is who maybe doesn't want to code or is not able to code using the studio interface directly like that and go in here and ask his or her questions in here. Um, currently just disabled as you can see here as long as, as, long as you run the, the server or as you've seen here what we do currently we have a server we can run the server here and then we can send with python or any other kind of programming language actually um, some questions to this endpoint and get a response so that's it actually for this video so hopefully that was interesting to you if you want to try it give it a try yourself and if you have not done so far please subscribe to the channel thanks a lot and hopefully see you in the next video until then best guys